Hey everybody, Card Dreamer here, coming at you on behalf of D Class Derailed, and today we are bringing you a, another discussion. Uh, I have with me Demi Human is back. It's true. It's been a while. It's been a nice, clean, calm atmosphere with Adam, but yeah, you know, he's got to return. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take that as a compliment because this conversation is gonna get. It's not gonna get chaotic, chaotic at all. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a regular conversation. Oh, that's so weird. Why are we doing this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this actually might be the first real conversation we've actually had on the channel. That's or like you and I have had. I've had real ones with other people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but today we are actually going to discuss the first four episodes of season two for Batwoman on the CW. And this isn't meant to be a review specifically of each episode and breakdown and oh my gosh. It's just the overall feel with them having a new Batwoman, what we think. So it, I don't think this is going to be a huge long conversation, but it was something nerdy enough that at least I know I'm into. I know Demi watches the CW shows too. So being the drastic changes that are going on in the show, it, I thought it would be worth discussing. For sure, for sure. And I was going to say, I, I will – be interested to see just just in general how long we can try and keep this as a serious conversation because I feel like at some point it's gonna it's gonna swing left I don't know how it's gonna happen what's gonna happen and hey, there's gonna be some swings let me tell you oh no hundred percent hundred percent but um but yeah no I I it's funny because I think this one was sort of we we prefaced this like while we were while we were at work all the time before the season actually came out. Um, so I think it was it, it makes sense for us to do this conversation for sure. Agreed. So there will be spoilers. Um, I'm I'm being nice to give a warning because typically typically my life's been spoiled for left and right. So I don't know if anybody else's. And by spoiled, I mean rotten. I don't mean like in a good way. <laughs> um, <laughs> but all right. So for those who don't know. <laughs> Season one of Batwoman had uh, Ruby Rose cast as Kate Kane, as uh, and she played Batwoman. The actress and CW parted ways. We'll just keep it at that. They parted ways for whatever reason. Kind of abruptly, kind of out of left field as far as I think the public was concerned. Mm-hmm. And interesting enough, CW – decided they were going to keep going. And there was no, like, transition nope. there with the actors, like, passing a torch or anything, like, no weeding off the one to the other. It was just season two, all new Batwoman. <clears throat> but, so my opinion is, to, I'm sure, let me get yours since you're the guest. Go ahead and give your opinion first, what you think. What do you think how they handled, first off, the transition from one to the other? Um... I <laughs> so I think it was uh it it to me personally um sort of knowing the sort of knowing a bit of the back and I you know what I'm going to I'm going to recant that already I was going to say I was almost going to say knowing a bit of the backstory it was it made it feel choppy and just and not just choppy but even sloppy but I'd say even if you don't necessarily know the backstory of like what caused the change in Batwoman, it just it seemed very like it seemed very out of left field for her to just be like, oh, uh, like episode one, she just gets into a like into a plane crash and then like she's gone. And I'm just like, that's that that's how we went. This is this is really this is what we decided to to go with of all like. I mean, it was symbolic of how much a show could easily crash and burn. <laughs> I mean, that's be real. That there was probably a slight symbolism with that. In all fairness, that was probably intentional. You think the CW just decided to show their belly, and they're like, "We know this is gonna." You know what? To and not to skip ahead, but like, I do feel like in a lot of ways, now that you're alluding to that, I do feel like what they did to to Ryan, very first episode is very much an allusion to that as well. 
I yeah. I actually – so I have to give them – we have to take into consideration is that there was going to be no soft transition. The actress was – like Ruby Rose left, gone. There is no there, – there, she was not coming back to film any transition. She was gone. She's done. So they didn't have a choice but, kind of, but to make it abrupt, especially given the ending of season one because Ruby and CW parted after – Season one was long gone finished, so they couldn't go back and, and do anything. Exactly. <clears throat> For how she went, though, I don't feel it was that bad because they did tie it into her at least going out to talk to Supergirl about the kryptonite. Mm-hmm. Which I think is ironic that even though that plot point is still pseudo going, now it's kind of like nobody knows what the discussion was or the answer was to the main question because I believe she was going out there to ask permission to destroy it, that last piece of kryptonite. Mm. And even though Lucas, at least, I don't know if the stepsister, I forget her name, um, who's been helping Lucas, and it was Kate's half-sister or stepsister or whatever. Um, I don't know if they knew Supergirl was Kara. I think Lucas okay. did. But given at least one of them knows, nobody's thinking to go, well, maybe we should contact her and find out the answer because now it became a threat again in the first episode. Exactly. So everybody's like, eh. I also find it interesting, though, you would think as good of a friends as they tried to, to make Supergirl and Batwoman, Kate Kane Batwoman, mm-hmm. in Crisis, that when that plane exploded, Kara would have at least showed up somewhere and be like, oh my gosh, what happened? Like I understand there was a crossover canceled, but I think that was more. I think that crossover was with Superman. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand COVID's affecting filming and stuff. They're just getting their shows standalone back up and going. But it really somehow should have been written in, even if it's just like a phone call or if it's like a, a Zoom or Skype call or something, where yeah. Supergirl's like, "Oh my gosh, my bestie, what happened?" <laughs> and, but I mean, like nothing. And it seems a little. You, you, they went through this effort and crisis of bringing people, all these heroes, closer together, and it seems like it. They're now trying to keep them apart. It's like you made the world whole and complete just to keep them separate again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. That is a good point. Um, I think. I don't know. I think with their with the way they're continuously trying to allude to to more and more things as the season progresses, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw if I saw um another like if I saw a few superhero cameos as the season progresses, but but I don't think that it's like like as as much as I wouldn't be surprised by it, I'm not like I'm not like I'm not keeping my eyes super peeled for it. Like I, I do think that, <laughs> like, but it's it's just that was a good pun. Just, that was a good pun because it was Superman that was supposed to cross over. You're not gonna keep super peeled for. It. I got it. That was pretty good. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? Never mind. But um, no, but it's. I mean, I think that I think they've got. I I think for this. For this show especially, I, it does really feel like they're trying to – they're trying really hard just to, like – just to grasp at straws and to really, like, bait to see whether or not it's, like, it's it's going to have the longevity. Because to me, to do what you did to, to the new Batwoman in the first episode, it – again, it almost feels like an insurance policy. So it almost just seems like – you're gonna see it like you're gonna see her slowly decline as the episodes go, and it's just like if if she gets if like 
if she decides to stay for another season, then we'll find a heel for her. But if not, then oh, uh, okay. So you you know might want to explain what you're talking about to those who don't know. So, Kate was, she, or not Kate? I don't even, I don't even remember the new girl's name. That's sad. Um, oh, uh, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Okay, so she got shot with a kryptonite bullet, um, and she survived. But that was like sec. Episode that episode two. Was it episode two or was it episode one? I think that was episode two. Okay. Episode right. one, I think just dealt with her getting the bad suit, and episode two was the fake Bruce and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. No, I see what you're saying, and you're right. They have been keeping that – because actually – because I kind of thought – actually, that may not even have been episode two. That may, No, yeah, that had to be episode two. But they kind of dropped it for a little bit. There was like an episode I thought they, they kind of forgot it, and then they brought it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. No, it was episode two that happened. Episode three, they didn't talk about it, even though she was suffering from it. And then four, they brought it, they, they brought it back up. Exactly. Okay. Um, so it's been a while since I, I haven't watched one, two, and three in – Again, so I only watch them as they're airing, uh, so that's why I'm a little fuzzy on the memories. But I, I at least they're not dropping it, and she's human. She's not Kryptonian, so I'm not even sure what the heck's going on because as far as I understood in comic continuity, it took years for Luther to get cancer from the Kryptonite ring he carried on him. I'm not sure how a bullet that kind of just half pierced her is really going to do anything. She's not Kryptonian. Mm-hmm. Unless there's something we are uberly missing with this, <laughs> yeah, I, I, like that. Uh, imagine the imagine the irony of that if they were just like surprise. She's a bat Kryptonian girl. It's like, <laughs> what? It's like, but then okay, but if she was, then then to me, then then they're then they definitely have no excuse for for not having Supergirl on there. Yeah, exactly. Um. And maybe that – they could actually – now that I, you said that out, low, out loud and I think back to what I was saying, it could be because she reappeared as Batwoman. Mm. Kara thinks she's okay. Kara just assumes Kate is okay. Mm, okay. She may not be aware it's a different person in the yeah. Batsuit. Um, I do want to say overall it's not like she took up the mantle. It's not like they just immediately replaced Kate. Like, oh, here. Here's a new Batwoman. Mm. So – they have someone who found the bat suit. She's doing even though Batwoman took a lot of flack for being quote unquote woke and pushing an agenda, mm. I don't per se feel it in the way the show was done. If and if it's there, not that I couldn't see it, being that the new Batwoman's black, she was from a poor community, she has a criminal background. I mean, they're playing like every statistic they could technically. So I can understand why people are saying it. Yeah. Having said that though, I feel they're doing it in a good way. Um and they're in new territory cuz it's I don't if I I don't recall this character ever coming up in the comic books. As far as I'm aware, this is a new character for the show mm-hmm. because Kate, uh, because Ruby Rose left. So it gives them a chance to do something different, and they, I think they're taking advantage of something different. People are in the, today's cancer culture or woke culture are so eager to take an existing property and – My choice of words, and not and the word I should use, are two different words. Uh, <laughs> today's culture wants to turn current things on their head and adapt them to current to their needs, views, or wants, rather than create something new to fit it. Um, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You know, there was a call for a while. Why can't we have? Why can't Bruce Wayne be black? I remember that being an issue a couple years ago, or because there was talk about it. Why? Why can't we have certain like? But why do you need to change what's already been established since like 
you know, 1942. Like, just stop. Ooh. Make something new. People seem to be afraid of doing that. And to be to be fair, with the saturation of these big things of comic books and and the certain big names, it's hard to make a new one that's going to jump out and work. I get that. And it, <clears throat> I know, like Static Shock, Black Lightning. Even though Black Lightning show, I thought is actually pretty good, and I I know it's its last season, yeah, which is a shame, but it doesn't seem to be enough for people, and I think this was their opportunity of trying to. We have no choice but to do something new, so why can't this was the way of combining those two world two worlds? We're not taking an existing character per se we're taking an existing mantle and spinning it because we don't have a choice anyway yeah yeah and i think this was a good and honestly i don't mind this point of view i actually think it is refreshing that because most of the superheroes that i know of with the exception of icon um i mean i really can't think of any who had really humbling beat down end of the rope beginnings like this character has had shazam maybe billy batson yeah being in a foster home okay but it was still a loving family it wasn't the rundown you know hole in the roof orphanage that i'd leave some kids at but (laughs) (laughs) i'm kidding i tell my son that all the time (laughs) i'm like he's lucky i didn't leave him at one of those (laughs) just wake up every day you're welcome yeah, it's true. It's true. No, I'm, I'm kidding, people. I, I, <laughs> well, no, not that I don't tell them that, but I'm kidding in meeting. <laughs> uh, but I mean, no, but serious, like, they gave her a really humbling beginning. Someone who's going to understand Batman is the world's greatest detective, but he has to learn and study. She's got the experience, which in its own way is one upping. Yeah. But not in a, we're just make her better than Bruce just to make her better. She's not better than Bruce. She doesn't have the fighting. She doesn't have the intelligence. But she's got experience. Mm-hmm. And that, and I think that is something unique to play on. And she, it gives her a different motivation than, than a lot of other superheroes for doing what they do. 100%. She understands the numbers. She understands statistics. She understands that no matter what, like – I mean, she she's dealing with her in real life, what she's got to go through, her probation and all that. And being the hero, being able to make a difference and fighting for those people who are in a, who, who are just another number. It, it is different. That's like Superman doesn't do that. Batman doesn't do that. Like, so I, I give them props for doing that, and I think they did it well-written in, in a well-written way. Yeah, and, and it's funny that you say that because I was literally uh, – I it was – that was one of the that was one of the 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 stumbling points for me as well was feeling like was feeling like it did seem very it did seem very baity um in a lot of ways but i do think that like like you said there was there's a point in there where in in the way that they wrote it it seemed to explain um it seemed to explain why why she had the potential to be a good to be a good batwoman i think her i think her her mentality in which she said like like she's grown up around criminals so she knows how they think to me was like that's something that regardless of who you are you can then reason and say she's got a point like that's a fair that's a fair assessment like to then to then say that using your bad experiences, you're then going to turn it around and, in, in a sense, to go back to your point, like flip it on its head, but to use it in a way that, like, makes you a very contendable superhero and a, like, contendable adversary against your, against the, the bad guys, in a sense. And I think, like, um, it's, it is an interesting, it's an interesting take because, like, her, spoilers, um, her, 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 her way of sort of coming back to the idea of the code was different as well because, like, her mentality 
was like, oh, I have this suit, I have this power. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna kill uh, I'm gonna kill the person who killed my my mom or my foster mom, and like in so in her mind she was already like she was already in a sense she had her own personal hedonistic like like views of oh I'm gonna get I'm gonna use this to exact my revenge, but then for her to then turn around and like sort of fall back onto the Batwoman, Batman-ish track of saying, like, this power, as much as I want to use it for my own personal gain, it's not just about me. Like, I have a responsibility with this thing that I more or less have to abide by um, because it's not just going to affect me. And this having this suit and having this responsibility means that it's much bigger than me. So I think like the way that they've been able to really tie that in to sort of rein, like steer the reins and say like, she's very different. And in that she, she has a tendency to want to make her own decisions that are very contrary to like the Batman that we've known or the Batwoman that we've seen. But like, she still finds a way to like, to, to come back to it. I think it's, it's, um, It's a, it is definitely, um, I give, I give brownie points to the, to the writers there because they, they found a way to really, um, to really lasso that whole thing back together. Cause it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's very easy to like, to just go off on a completely different spin and say like, well, she's Batwoman now. She's got the suit. She managed to convince uh, she managed to convince the team that she's like that she can have it, so she can just go off and do her own thing. But um, yeah, I think they, I think, I think they did a good job in that regard. So for sure, it's a yeah. No, I I totally agree. And the other thing I want to mention is like she doesn't immediately. The only qualm I have, honestly, is why do the superhero costumes always seem to fit? everybody like kate just was able to fill in batman's suit and yeah they retailed it a little bit but she was able to wear it and then this woman who's not even the same build ryan is not the same build as kate is able to just magically fit in the suit i don't understand what bruce is making his bat suits out of that could just magically fit everybody <laughs> build, but it's kind of bugging me um the other thing i liked with her character though is that they're finding a way to kind of tie it into season one mm-hmm. in a decent in decent little snippets that there is there it kind of retroactively has a little bit of a smoother feel. I like that there was the flashback to Kate Kane, Batwoman, res- uh, saving her life in an alley, yeah. recognizing some fire in her, and writing about it in the journals that she writes to Bruce. And I also like. I really like that little touch, and I'm I'm sad that they only did it in episode one. I want to see her do it again. Um, I like that she picked up the journal where Kate left off, where and where the, now there's kind of a tradition, like a legacy being passed on, where uh, Bruce started it and Kate was writing to Bruce. Then it was Ryan's writing to Kate, trying to fill in for each other, like showing they got each other's back. They're carrying on for the other person. I would like to see that continue, but they only did it in episode one. Yeah. Um, I, there are little things here and there. I do want this. I would like to see get improved. I would like to see her get a little more training fight fight wise. She's a little rough. And I think that's kind of silly that none of them are insisting on some kind of fighting or defense class, if she's going to go out there and fight criminals. It's making her rely too much on the technology. Yeah. And unless they're going to play that up later, if they, they maybe they will play that up as a plot point, but right now it does feel like she's relying too heavy on the technology. Once in a while, it kind of shows you she, she has some kind of training, but I don't know if it's something she learned on the street. Like, I don't, maybe I missed it, but I don't recall her ever saying she actually took fighting classes. And I feel like she needs it. She, she, she's still too rough. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. No, I think that's, I think that's, a, um, I think, I think 
every and this and this more goes in regards to like to I think just synonymously it's been a thing with uh with all the the bat like with all the bat characters so like they've all had some sort of like serious intensive training that sort of preluded them picking up the picking up the suit and like and going out and fighting uh and fighting villains so i think for her they definitely there should if she's had that training then like i think there should be some sort of allusion to it um as opposed to like as opposed to yeah if it even if it was like fighting on the street like something something that sort of echoes like what makes her sort of fit into this into this bat woman character um i think like i think the to me i saw the echo of like of um though she was though she went from foster from foster home to foster home she her greatest nemesis was responsible for killing her parent which i think is very much again that's like that's like top tier bat like batman batwoman material so i think to me like that made sense that like she's chasing that person who is essentially responsible for the death of her parent and she's like she has to pull the reins in on on like not wanting to to kill that person um so yeah i mean i think i think there's a but to your point yeah i i think that's it's necessary like just to continue for continuity's sake i think it just, it just makes sense for them to do something like that i agree and actually it's funny you mentioned um that they made Beth uh, her her arch rival yeah. in this, um, because there's going to be. What's interesting is they they managed to take the main villain. I don't know if Beth is supposed to be. It's weird because it's going to play up no matter what. If she's meant to be or was meant to be the that continuing ongoing rogue that. Batwoman was supposed to face off over and over again, mm-hmm. but they change not. They managed to find a way to keep her in that role, but totally change the dynamic of that of the role. Because whereas, so when it was Kate, there is a there was a hugely emotional connection with that because they were twins, they were sisters. So there is that huge emotional aspect. Like, not only are you, you mean you're my villain, but you're you're my sister. And there's always that wanting to redemption. Sure. There was always that background of always looking for her. But then there was that added emotional weight that she was going to let Beth die for her, for, uh, and let her doppelganger from the multiverse replace her. Yeah. After after crisis, like that that was huge. That's that. That's a huge thing. Like, I don't know what that says about a person. Like, I I don't know what that says about how you can how you view family or relationships. Because like, you killed the one guy for what he did to Beth, keeping her prisoner. But you were willing to let your sister die for technically someone who was not your your sister. She was your sister's counterpart. Like. And you were willing to replace her because she looked the same and she was – and and sounded the same and and wasn't a villain. Like I don't know. That 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 was a huge thing that could have played on and on and on. Like that's a head game right there. Oh, 100%. I don't – I mean – but now the role is more – because there isn't that sister dynamic anymore. So all that emotional weight is gone. I, Having said that though – I feel they set it up to be th- – this is now Batwoman's Joker. Like this is going to be the villain that's always going to be the one because not only it killed your mother or she mm-hmm. killed your mother. She knows who you are. You know who she is. Like you know each other. You're interconnected with Kate's story because of the background of how it all took place. Yeah. You can't exact your revenge because of the mantle you're taking up. Exactly. So it's kind of like there, there, there's going to be ongoing torture here 
like a whole – you're not going to – but she's also not going to play by the same rules that Kate did. So Beth's got to change her game. So it's really going to be a more – I feel like they set it up to be a more traditional Batman Joker role with these two, which I find interesting. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And I, th- I think I think to that point too, I think the I think the the emotional tie in there is it's it's still there, but it's not as prevalent because obviously like Beth's Beth's reason for becoming, I guess, Ryan's Joker is still her sister. Like it's like it's still because of the fact that like you have on the suit of my sister. My sister who in whatever sick, twisted way I still care about, but at the same time, I plotted to kill. So, like, it's, like, it's this weird, it's this weird dynamic that, like, no, I don't, I'm not related to you directly, but there is that, like, familial, like, like, bond for, for, from one side that's at least, like, whatever I need to do, like, you cannot succeed while you're wearing this, while you're wearing this suit, while you're taking on this mantle, because, like, I swore that I was going to be the one to get rid of my sister who was wearing this suit, who was the originator of this suit. So, like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's a, it's a weird dynamic, but they did manage to sort of, like, to sort of fiddle around with it enough that like it it just squeezes in there like it like it just works to the point where it's like okay it just it, squeezes in there like some stranger fitting into the Batwoman suit you're a, <laughs> <laughs> like some female cousin fitting into Batman suit it just squeezes in there <laughs> oh Jesus. it is actually no it's gonna bother me now that I think about it and I th- it le- like less it's less the it's less the 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 Kate to Ryan, it's but it's more the it's more the the Bruce to Kate that gets me. Because yeah. like yes you, like yes you made some alterations but like for all that if the alterations were that significant you might as well have just thrown out the suit and made another one. I agree, I agree because now they did. So I want to point out the one – one of the two glaring flaws that I have found in the Batwoman series, but be it one or two. There is no trophy – there's no trophy room or case or area in this Batcave. Mm. That kind of bu- – even when they went to the alternate Earth um, and and found Bat- Batman who – I guess that version of Kingdom Come Batman. When yeah. they when they met him, like the trophy area was up in in the manor, not the cave. I didn't I, mm. I didn't like that. Like I, it's the the cave feels very empty. It's ve- like Adam West had more in his back cave than this. Like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> like I mean I don't understand. Even when Scooby Doo crossed over, there was fucking back cookies in that cave like there's nothing in this you You were using commodore 64 computers still to do your hacking work (laughs) this guy just brought up bat cookies i cannot believe (laughs) i'm not exaggerating that's what they called them bat cookies and milk that's what they had them in the crossover i didn't make that name up i wish i did okay but no bat milk would have sounded gross (laughs) if i said that i I can't say bat milk want some bat milk like (laughs) I mean, who said they're milking bats for that? That's a lot of bats for that glass of milk. That's gross. Yeah, that's, oh, oh, that just sounds wrong. That just sounds wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, it is no longer a serious conversation. Exactly. I, it, it was about to happen, but um, no. But I think, like, I think, I think to your point, the um, the I I don't know if they like. I feel like they they just decided to throw that in. Like just as a reference to the fact that like that that in a lot of ways that Bruce Wayne is the one who keeps the trophies. It's not necessarily Batwoman in any like in any respect that does it. I think it's more it's more of a him thing that like he that he's more the one who's like who who has this who has this idea in his head and philosophy that he's gonna keep trophies of of things that like 
whether it's accomplishments, regrets, whatever. And I think the reason why it wasn't like a big, like it wasn't a big spectacle and why it wasn't a trophy room um, in the crossover was because in a lot of ways it, it was, it seemed very much like the Bruce Wayne that they met was more regretful more than anything. And I think like, and to me, like obviously they showed they showed a few things, but the biggest thing that they had that highlighted like his his trophies was was Superman's like like was Superman's pair of broken glasses. And like to me it's just it's one of those things when he when he talked about it, it clearly wasn't something he was that proud of. Um so like well, he didn't talk well, no, I guess he did talk about it. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't like he didn't. He didn't go into that much detail because obviously, uh, crisis. They weren't. They weren't planning on like giving a full, uh, like a full rundown of everything. But like, yeah, I, I just, I feel like at least to me, I feel like the reason why they didn't keep it continuous because it, it did very much seem like just a Batman thing, not a Batwoman. But thing. here's the thing. So here's why it bugs me. I understand Bruce doesn't do anything or most things without mm-hmm. a reason for it. And it's not just sentimentality. Not that he isn't a sentimental person per se, but it's it's he keeps that to himself. Mm-hmm. Almost everything in that cave, almost everything, and no matter in, what incarnation, whether it's <coughs> excuse me, whether it's the comic books, uh, the Justice League cartoon, or what have you. Everything, a lot of, if not most of the things that he kept in that cave, at some point, he found a use for himself. It was like contingency plans that he kept. Mm-hmm. Even the older costumes he kept in the trophy cases, with the exception of Robin's. Robin's is the only sentimental thing he did not keep as a contingency plan. He kept it to honor Jason Todd. That was it. Yeah. Like everything else, even old costumes came back into play at some point. So for him not to have anything in the Batcave seemed really odd. Yeah, and I mean, like, I think, I think maybe, I mean, one could say that 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 was, it was more or less to, again, I think even in the even in their their attempt to do it in Crisis. Um, and maybe the lack of it was to like was to maybe in a way like tip the hat off to it and like to show homage for it. But like, but I do really feel like with with um, with Batwoman and what they were trying to do, it did seem very much like they were trying to carve out their own um, their own identity. You um, can't do that when you're literally stealing the man's cave suit and everything using his tag like, you can't do that <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong but that it i agree with you but at the same time isn't isn't that what they're trying to do with this one too they're tr- they're trying to they're trying to find a way to make this girl seem like her own independent batman batwoman without like while while also trying to make her like stand in the shadow of 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 Kate and I think like and I think at a certain point there's like there might be a way that they can that they can successfully do it so it doesn't seem like all you think about is the fact that she's Kate Kane's replacement but like it's hard to do in the same way that like you it's it's hard to 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 not realize that the entire time that Kate Kane seemed like Bruce Wayne's replacement because from the beginning it was just like hey like we don't know where Batman is. Batman, Batman never showed up after, after all this time. And then she finds his, she finds his, his stuff. And then she decides she's going to take it, take up the mantle. But, and like the entire time, it's just like, okay, well, by the end of the season, then people are like, people are finally respecting Batwoman, and the Batwoman's gone. And then now there's a new Batwoman, and now everybody thinks about her as being the old one. But they're like. I mean, she's kind of new. But here's but, the like, difference. Here, here, here's the difference with that. They, so they kind of pull the Batman Beyond with this in a very subtle way, because it's not the differences between 
Yes, I get Ryan wants to be her own Batwoman. I get that. And that's fine. And I'm not saying Kate has to stay in Batman's shadow, but it was his stuff and he – whatever. And she doesn't have to keep her own things, but it, she doesn't have to keep her own things. She could be her own person. Fine. But the difference is Ryan's just picking up a mantle, whereas Kate kind of recreated re – reinvented it. She became Batwoman. So that is a new character, a new identity, whereas Ryan is just trying to fill the shoes. Mm, gotcha. the, th the other thing is that Bruce – the difference is Kate was killed. Bruce, yes, disappeared, but there's a reason. For, I, I believe there was a reason for it. So there is an episode where Lucas explains to Kate what happened to Joker, that Bruce actually killed – Joker in their final confrontation that Joker was not at Arkham. So if if you think about the back to Batman Beyond, what even when he picked up a gun, he didn't even use it. But when he crossed his line, he stopped being Batman. Yeah. And that I feel like this is kind of what they were implying with this. If Joker that battle with Joker was near the end or his last battle mm -hmm. and he killed them, he easily could have said, I've crossed my line. I have to stop. I mean, yeah. And he walked away from it all. I can't imagine that means, though, if he's going to keep the Batcave all there, that he just packed up all the goodies from it and, and, and sold them off or did whatever. It doesn't make sense to half-ass it. Yeah. So that's why it doesn't – to me, it was just kind of weird. The other thing is I also can't understand why if Lucas knew about the cave, knew about what his dad created, why the hell did he not know the Batmobile was behind a wall? Why the hell was the Batman behind the wall? Bro. <laughs> I don't even understand that. I didn't get like, who takes the time to go, you know what? I want this all here just in case I come back, but the Batmobile, nah, just just put it behind the wall. I don't know how we're going to get it out later. There's no there's no back door to that thing. Like, it was literally closed in a two-by-two two room and just sealed over. Like it just <laughs> yeah no honestly I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about that but that's actually a very good point <laughs> like I, I don't know like Alfred in his last days wants to be like are you serious Master Bruce and he's gonna be like just just bury it all. like are you fucking kidding me Master Bruce like Alfred is like my last fucking day and you have me recreating a cave over top of the car for what exactly. for what. You decide. You decide of all things. You want a secret room in a cave. It's a cave. And he left no door. They had. A, they had. He left no like secret panel or something to open it. The fake Bruce. I forget his real name. The one uh, that Beth helped create. Like fake Bruce had to blow a hole up in the in that wall just to find it, and it was random. Yeah, it didn't seem like he knew specifically where he was supposed to be shooting at. Exactly. So I don't I, – I really don't get Bruce's – unless Bruce's, like, last thing before he left is like, I'm just going to fuck with somebody's head, whatever. One last <laughs> one. <laughs> I don't care who finds it, but I'm fucking with him. <laughs> like, it just blew my mind. Like, I, I thought that was really odd. Um I'm kind of so. I'm. Uh, I don't want to get too far. I know we've already kind of went on tangents. I don't want to go off in, in season one stuff too much because it's really supposed to discuss the new bat, the new Batwoman. I do like where they've been going with it. Uh, I do think they rushed the Bruce line, the, the Bruce Wayne storyline a little. I don't know if that was due to Kate Kane no longer being around. <clears throat> Maybe they had more to do, like trying to fake Kate. Uh, into believing it was Bruce and, and try to build up something there, and maybe because now that Ruby left, they had to rush it. I don't know. I still think they could have kept it going more. Mm. Um, aside from that, <clears throat> I do – I even like where the storylines have been a little. I think they've been a little more down to earth. Yes, they're still dealing with Beth, and and they're even – Kate Kane's still very prominent of the storyline even though she's not in the show. I don't know how they're going to pull off the ending to that, if like with it all being fake or it was a big runaround. Or I'm really I'm curious how they're going to play the ending of this story arc over or off. 
But aside from that, like I, I think overall the new direction some of the storylines have been going with her dealing with um like uh the last episode with the candy lady, which was an interesting story. Yeah. Um I like I kind of liked her reply to the crow, like Kate's dad, with like, "How did you know to come here?" Like, she's like, "Simple. I actually looked." Like, and and that is a, I think that's a good nod to the comic trope I was talking about in the beginning, where there are no heroes that really deal with it. In fact, that even got brought up in the comic books at one point. I, it was an early, it was a Superman comic. Okay. I don't issue. I just remember reading it. Like this had to be late nineties, early, early two thousands, um, where basically this boy from a less than well off area of Metropolis even comments like and I think he was his clerk at the time. He's like, even Superman doesn't come here. They the cops don't deal with it and Superman doesn't even show up in that in that neighborhood and, and mm-hmm. he and he's like he was like dang he's right like there are certain areas I neglect it's easy to sit there and fly around the nice clean pretty parts of town yeah but what are you doing for the areas that, that do you always do you feel like it's already a lost cause you just not deal with it and so I think this is a good way of tackling the issue because that, that that is a good point for them to bring up the show uh, tackling areas and groups of crime that that need to help the most but do get overlooked in comics and other parts of the show i i give dc props back in that superman comic for addressing it and i give props now for them on the cw for addressing it because there are storylines you know it's even with arrow like i mean there's common things like they always deal with the drugs uh the drug dealing and all that but i mean to get into where they went with – even Candy Lady, I was kind of surprised was a topic that they tackled. Yeah. And it was like it was a good one to them to, for them to tackle. I'm just surprised they did it. I, I think it's I, – not necessarily – I don't know if I was surprised that they did it. I was just – I was more impressed in the manner in which they did it. So I think like – I think the – like the – the the way that the way that it was played off was like oh well the premise was already with this with this lady she's going to she's going to sell like she's going to come in take the candy and sell and like and pawn off this kid to the to the to the highest bidder and with her it's literally just like well you already know that that's the premise of what she's doing so it doesn't seem that surprising when they're just like oh well they're definitely not going to come for you but like so so it didn't it didn't feel again it didn't feel like they were trying to to bait that idea in there it seemed like it was just the right transition to go off of because it was like this girl really likes comic books she's she finds a lady who just so happens to to have a stack of comic books and she just so happens to be black and in and in this situation which to me like, let me not jump ahead of myself, but, like, but, so she eventually thinks, okay, well, these people are finally going to find me, and they don't, and then it, like, it, like, the fact that, the fact that it's just, like, well, they describe the girl that they're, uh, that they're trying to find, and it's, and clearly they're describing a, they're describing a white girl, is, was a, was a very, was a very, was a very practical way for them to do it, and then, to add on to that, the fact that the girl that they were describing was Beth, I thought to me was just like, to me that was even more interesting because it was another reason for Ryan to hate Beth. Like, not just as the girl who killed her mother, but like as the girl who, even before she was evil, was essentially like took prominence over her. I thought that was like I think yeah I think the way that they managed to do it was was um was was really was really interesting and it hey man it it makes me have hope that that apparently they can rewrite a dumpster fire into um 
I I don't know, man. Into a into a I guess a good. Um, what do homeless people do outside? They they use the dumpster fires to like heat themselves. Yeah, so they turn to the dumpster fires. Trash can fire. fires. They don't use the dumpsters. You melt the lids. What? You've never seen movies where they do that? The whole dumpster? No, I've seen them use the trash cans. Okay, whatever. But no, not whatever. They're two different oh things. My God. <laughs> the dumpsters are where you sleep, man. They, that's the roof over it's... your head. <laughs> Gosh, you burn your home down? <laughs> oh, damn, like, I mean, you got a death wish. You die in your house, right? No, look, you you get rid of the look. You you need a dumpster. You can't burn them. Look at The Walking Dead. If it were for a dumpster, Glenn would have died long before Negan. Well, he probably should have. Wow, you just wow. I'm not even talking to you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually funny, though, that you mentioned that point as being interesting and, and creating that dynamic because I see what you're saying. But at the very same time, even though I agree that that was a logical piece of writing, mm. that is also one of the more key points where I can see – People claiming they were trying, they were trying to make a political point that the white girl took precedent. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. And not only the white girl, the privileged white girl, because her father was head of the crows. Yeah. So I, I see, I can see that being a point of contention between fans and non-fans, uh, like people. But I, if if people are willing to talk about, like we are, like. That could also be a very good discussion piece, but because I, I agree with you, that is a logical piece of storytelling that, that was around the same time Beth went missing. It makes sense for them to have been looking for Beth because she was a high prominent figure, and you're right. That's going to stand out as opposed to orphan kid gone missing again, sixth one in a day. You know, like they run – like it's common – or it was a common theme within stories that orphan kids go missing, whether they're running away because they're not happy exactly. with their foster. So I understand that. And she had literally – I don't even think she'd been at the foster home for more than a couple of days before she was kidnapped. So it was yeah, kind of like – Yeah, that's just – that's let's not even – you know what? Let's – <laughs> Like they, they were probably like, we didn't even have to change the sheet. She was in and out, you know. <laughs> Oh jeez. Oh, so it, it was that was definitely a very the very one of the most intriguing parts of what they're doing, but whether yeah. or not that was a political statement used in the show or a logical piece of writing could be argued. Yeah. Um but the overall storyline of them tackling Candy Lady was a good one. I I was really Surprised they they used it, and I was actually pleased that they did. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the I think the other the later episodes kind of didn't have too much more to add. I think the, the setup was really in the first two episodes. It's interesting that they had to. I do think this is one of the more political woke things that they did is that you have another uh, at the very least bisexual if not full on um, gay lesbian per character with her obviously having had a prior relationship with her foster sibling uh, or friend like obviously she had they had a romantic relationship and I'm not against, by any means, uh, you know, having whatever the sexual preference is, but to have to maintain that characterization for Batwoman, mm. like really, the odds of you having two people be Batwoman and both are gay, yeah, like that just seems you're really trying to keep that agenda throughout the show, yeah, not yeah, yeah. do its story. I see, um, no, I see. I see your point, and I think, like, I think, to me, it was it. I I had the same. I had the same thought process as well, because, like, again, you don't you don't necessarily know it by the first episode. Right. So, like, 
you just think, oh, well, you know, this girl was there at the crash site. Um, she found the suit. And, and again, that doesn't diminish, like, how she found the suit. But, like, but it does, it is, it is interesting that, like, that even when they, um, when, like, they, they talk about, they talk about, um, they talk about Kate, Kate, um, they're, they're referring to her being Batwoman and her being, like, an advocate for, like, for other, for other people that are in the LGBTQ community, um, and, like, and then it just so happens that the person, again, that's taking on that mantle just so happens to be within that community, though I, I guess the they did it a lot more subtly whereas like where which i guess was maybe their way of trying to like still have it but maybe take a different approach because it was like because they i feel like them not mentioning that from the beginning was was a way to sort of like um was a way to almost pull back the reins and say like okay she may she may be a lesbian, but she, or even bisexual, but it's not, it, it, we're not trying to use that as such a focal point. Like, it's, like, it's not, like, yes, it's a thing that they have in common, but we're not trying to necessarily have that be the objective point, um, in, in her, um, in her storyline. Like, it's, it's a point that you find out, um, but like again it's not it's not like the point um so right so yeah, now no, i i agree with you i think they i think there was a definite it it seemed a bit odd that the that she just so happened to also be a lesbian but i think it was they did definitely try and take it uh at a different approach and maybe that was on purpose maybe they wanted to keep the same agenda but like change how they decided to 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 really like push that narrative see i do think it is one of so because it's interesting because i again i think there's nothing wrong with having it having characters that are that are gay or bi or transgender whatever but i feel like batwoman's going i do want to say that i do think batwoman is kind of pushing too hard But I think it's compensation for the rest of the CW shows that almost don't do anything with it at all. Because mm. um, if you think about it, um, you know, let's start with Arrow. The only character – you had one bi- – well, I guess two bisexual characters on the show, and that was Sarah Lance and Nissa al Ghul. Yeah, that was the only that I can remember, and there may have been more. I don't remember to be fair, but those are the ones that that that's the relationship that stood out most to me. It was the only one that dealt with that, and then you had Flash, which I don't think, I don't know if it dealt with it at all, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And then Supergirl comes along, and now there was nothing. F- no, I'm sorry. Her sister is a lesbian. And Shane. Shame. 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 It's a shame. Oh, a shame. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's a shame. But but they also had um, Dreamer. She's transgender. And they ha- I think. Oh, I don't hand- realize that. That's a good point. They handled those characters well because. There may have been a little here, like a focus here and there about it in an e- of an episode, but they don't make it a standout point. Exactly, they don't sit there and make it like this is what my character's about. It's just they they're more. This is only part of my character. I am a human being, more than this aspect of my life. They focus. Yeah, there were storylines that dealt with um, her sister and I'm sorry, Jimmy's sister being because they had the relationship. And then there was uh, yeah. Maggie Sawyer. So I mean, they they introduced, but it was all through the Supergirl's char- sister's character. They introduced that as part of her characterization, realizing what she wants out of life. They handled that in a certain way, and it, but it didn't take over the entire show. Batwoman 
on the other hand, seems to be pushing it not only with Kate uh, and her partner being a part of the Crows, or I forget her name, um, the her her dad's partner, second yeah. coming, whatever. Um, and then you got the new Batwoman being it. I feel, and then you had Alfred's uh, daughter, a daughter or granddaughter. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's a daughter or a granddaughter. Honestly, it could be. It, I think it's his granddaughter. Um, but they then they push it with her, and I don't. I mean, it's kind of like now it's like every female you're introducing is that like that that's balanced it out because not everybody in the world is straight, but not everybody in the world is gay either. So I I don't I I don't know. I feel like. By doing that, they're trying to use the show as a platform to promote that it's okay to be that, which is fine. They had an episode of of Kate Kane Batwoman dealing with that, mm-hmm. and there's no reason the new Batwoman still can't support that mentality with without being that. She can be straight or bi or whatever. She doesn't have – and still promote what uh, Kate supported. She can still support the message. It's okay to be those things without having to be that herself. Um, having said that, it's not that I mind her being that way. I just don't want to see this with every female character they introduce has to be has to be gay or bi. Like yeah. that, that, that's have the healthy mix. Because if you all you're doing is single out, making all of them gay, then you're saying it's not okay to be straight. We're supposed to be showing a community, being all together, being seeing each other as humans, and not for what their preferences are. So have them mix, work together, do whatever. Well, I mean, I don't think like I think I think I I, I don't want the message to be lost in the agenda. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. And, and like I think I think that's what I think what ends up happening is like is in a lot of ways um, and this is obviously just in a in a as a generalized point I think what ends up happening is when certain when certain groups feel like they they haven't been represented enough then instead of finding a a healthy medium a healthy medium just seems like your like you're settling. So I think what ends up happening is there's a push to go further to that side in order to say like in order to compensate for the lack of the lack of representation, which like which in some ways in some ways can work, but I don't know if it necessarily always does work. And that's the and I think that's where the I think that's where that slippery slope comes in because it's just like like, because yes. then in your like in your head, then you start to think, okay, well, uh, again, I I didn't even realize based off of the count, like let's say, let's say there's six, maybe seven females, um, in in Batwoman right now, and like four of them that have been introduced are all gay. Then it's just like then. Then at a certain point, if there's, if it's, if it feels, if it starts to feel like, okay, well, who's to say that the next female after that, and then the next female after that, and then the next female after that, the introduce is, isn't going to be gay. Um, then, then it's, then it, then again, then that's when you start to like, it's, it's that fine line of just like, okay, well, what's the what's the intention is the intention to focus on this or is the intention to tell the story of like of this superhero that just so happens to be this so and that's a fair point and and again there's a lot of there are some things to take in, into consideration like ruby leaving the show so abruptly it could be that they wanted only x number and Ruby leaving kind of fudged it, so they're trying to get back on track, and then they'll move forward with a healthier balance, and that's fine. And I have no problem with the characters right now. Like I like uh, Alfred's da- uh, granddaughter. I like uh, what's her name? That's part uh, that works for the Crows. I like the new. I actually like Ryan. I really like her character. She's very different. She's she actually feels a little more down to earth. Mm-hmm. Where Kate did feel like she was trying to be the badass and and stand up 
against Gotham where Bruce walked away. Like mm. the, everyone portrayed something different about themselves. So I like these characters. I just, like I said, don't want to see the agenda overtake the story. Make the story first. People will like your character. If your character happens to be gay or bi or whatever the case may be, but you're telling the good story first, people will accept everything about her because they like what she's doing. Yeah. What she what she is is not as important as who she is, so to speak, or I don't know, I could be saying that wrong. Like what she makes herself, how she portrays herself, how people mm. Like if if people if she's a well written character, people will take to her, like it, yeah. and, and no, will accept. And, and I think you, I think you said it right. Yeah, what she is won't shouldn't overshadow who she is. No, that that I I get exactly what you're saying. Like yeah, exactly. So, but um, I think we covered a good. We actually I honestly thought this discussion was going to be shorter than a it lot is. shorter. <laughs> um, which is good. Like that means there was a lot to talk about with Batwoman. That means. The, the show's doing something. In four episodes, you had an hour worth to talk about, and we went on a little bit of tangents with Crisis and, and Batman, but it, it tied into the overall uh, narrative. I so far like what they're doing. I like – I'm enjoying this search for Kate Kane storyline they're doing with the new Batwoman. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the ending is going to be like. I don't know if anybody's going to be happy with the ending, no matter how, quote-unquote, good it may or may not be because – in the end, you know they're not gonna find Kate exactly. because Ruby's gone. Like she, they're they're never gonna find her, or they're gonna be like get there just in time to see the bomb go off and blow her up, and someone's gonna be like Rachel, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, had to make a Dark Knight reference. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, I'm cur- I, I would. I, I want a season three. I want to see them fi- get establishment done with this season and see what they can do with their with their footing established at that point with season three. I give me at least a third season and I sh- I will be happy. Yeah. Uh, and I will say though, Legends. I, I, to top on it, to be fair with CW, Legends actually does have. Does practice the uh, relationship with Sarah Lance and her girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I think CW overall can do a healthy balance. I just don't want to see Batman do or Batman. I don't want to see Batwoman do a go too far with it. I want them to to, to keep the balance. Yeah. But anyway, having said that, Car Dreamer. Apparently, I have no partner now. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, you said nothing. I gave you the opening. I, like, <laughs> I, I had to cover up my cough. Jeez, man. Demi-human. Jeez, man, demi-human. That is his new name, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <sighs> but uh, this has been D-Class Derailed. And this is our discussion about Batman. Season two and what we think about it overall, I am actually really enjoying it. I don't think it is the the uh, dumpster fire that people are making it out to be. Wow! No, no, that that I'm actually kidding. no, I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. <laughs> That's I've actually saw that with like episode one premiere and everybody. I kept seeing these YouTube videos. Oh, Batwoman's ratings suck. Bat, oh, Batwoman's a dumpster fire. Like, no, you gotta relax. It's not like you people it's, gotta chill. And right. I understand. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not as bad as people are making it sound. It, it's actually pretty decent. It's. It, I think it's worth watching. I think she's doing a very good job uh, in the new in the role, and I'm excited. I'm curious to see where they go with it. I like that we're getting more of the bat toys. The bat. The Batmobile. Only comes in when it has no relation to Bruce now. I get it. Kate Kane was worthy. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, Never mind if Lucas has the journal of his father who invented all this stuff and seems to know about the entire Batcave but doesn't know where the Batmobile was. I got it. He knows nothing. Lucas is – why do we keep him around? So we can use the Commodore 64s that are down there. That's it. That. That's it. That's it. That's why. That's why we keep them around. And to argue with the girl who uh, – the Kate's uh, stepsister. 
That's true. They bicker a lot. They do, and it's a shame. I like Kate Stepson. I want to see her be not that she isn't featured often. She is. She's she's she gets good amount of screen time. Mm. I would like to see her become though her character become a little more. I want to see. I know she's running the clinic, which is good, and it and allows for good story pieces to, to set up when it's needed. But I want to see her become a stronger character. Yeah, no, I could, I, I, I definitely, I definitely see. I, that. I like her character. Yeah. But anyway, Car Dreamer, Demi Human, Batwoman covered. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we end the. That's, That's how, how we end it. Now we're just done. <laughs> we shorthanded it. Uh, uh, till next time, everybody. Stay evil. <laughs>